So let me start by asking you a question. Can anyone here read that sign on the slide? <laughs> if you can't, uh, I guess most of you probably think it has something to do with cows or with children. Um, so let me tell you a story, the story behind this sign. So I'm that little boy in the middle, and, and I grew up in East Germany. And when I grew up, I walked past this sign almost every day because it was attached to a door on my family's farm where we kept our cows. It essentially translates to certified tuberculosis-free cattle. You know, being a little boy, I didn't think much about it at all. I only knew from my grandfather that tuberculosis uh, is a disease that can make cows very sick. But apart from this, you know, as being a little boy, I didn't, I didn't care much about it. So now fast forward 30 odd years and I'm standing here giving a presentation about eradicating tuberculosis. So why is that? Obviously, you know, a lot of things change in 30 years, not just the way I dress. <laughs> uh, but also, I'm, I'm now a trained microbiologist and uh, I specialize in uh, infectious disease research and uh, particularly um, on tuberculosis. So, Obviously, I now know a lot more, and I know that TB, how uh, tuberculosis is also known, um, doesn't just affect cows. It's actually a major problem in the world. So let me start by giving you some facts. So TB, as I said, tuberculosis is also known, is the biggest killer amongst all infectious diseases on that planet. Over the last 200 years, it is estimated that TB has killed about 1 billion people. So this is more than malaria, plague, smallpox, influenza, HIV, cholera combined. That's all diseases you may have heard about. But what about closer to, uh, you know, 2017? So the latest data we've got is from 2015. And even two years ago, there were still 1.8 million people dying from tuberculosis, more than 10 million cases. And so why is this? Just to put it into context, the recent uh, Ebola outbreak in Western Africa killed about 11 to 12,000 people. This is about tuberculosis killed more in two days, every day, every year. But not so many people know about it. Why is this? TB is a lung disease. It's caused by a bacterium called Mycobacterium tuberculosis. And it really affects mainly the poor uh, people on that planet because it's, it's a disease of overcrowding and uh, poor hygiene. And it all starts when an infected patient that has active tuberculosis coughs up the bacteria and they can then infect others around them. And we know that about 2 billion people, in other words, about a third of the world's population is infected with tuberculosis. Luckily, only 1.8 million people of those die, but it's still way too many. So I said that TB is a disease of uh, the poor uh, people on the planet, and you can see here on the world map that it really affects mainly developing countries in Sub-Saharan Africa, Asia, uh, Eastern Europe and also um, uh, South America. And unfortunately, these are the same regions of the world where other infectious diseases such as HIV AIDS is very prevalent. And we know that uh, being infected with both diseases at the same time is a major risk factor for actually dying when you're infected with tuberculosis. However, probably the, most, the more relevant problem and also more uh, relevant to people in, uh, in the Western world is that it becomes incredibly harder to treat tuberculosis. Tuberculosis is a treatable disease. If you've got it, you have to take drugs for about six months, and then if your uh, strain that infected you is uh, susceptible to those drugs, you will be cured. However, over the last decade or so, more and more of those uh, bacteria have become resistant to the drugs that we use to treat TB. And we call that multidrug resistant tuberculosis, or MDR-TB. The slide you can see here, it, you know, it's not a solar system, and I don't really want you to look at all the details, but it's a very interesting uh, 
slide from the World Health Organization that shows us how much it costs to treat one case of multidrug resistant tuberculosis in different countries of the world. And without looking at all the details, it really tells us that in many countries it is more expensive to treat one case of multidrug resistant tuberculosis than the GDP per capita in that country. So it's an enormous public health issue and it's very, very expensive. And if you think that MDRTB is far away, then think twice. Because here in far north tropical Queensland, we're only a short boat right away from one of the most severe outbreaks of multidrug resistant tuberculosis on the planet. On some of those islands off the coast of Papua New Guinea, we have such a high incident of uh, MDRTB that there is a major problem and you know that it's only a short trip from one island to the next, from Papua New Guinea to Australia, and from one of those islands to the mainland. And bugs don't respect borders. Once they're on the mainland, they can go anywhere. So what can we do? And this is really where scientists like myself come in. Because we know that instead of treating a disease, we can also prevent it, or we can even eliminate it. And how can we do this? We know that the only and the best way to eradicate a disease is vaccination, because we've done it before. We have almost eradicated polio, which you can see here, and we have eradicated smallpox. Both of these diseases were or are almost eradicated because we have an effective vaccine that was rolled out worldwide by the World Health Organization. The WHO, World Health Organization, has put out a very ambitious goal to eliminate TB by 2050. This is about 35 years from now, the same time frame that you can see here for polio. So we know that if we will have an effective vaccine, it is possible to eradicate tuberculosis. Some of you in the audience may think now, oh, well, there's a vaccine against TB. I've probably uh, got it when I was a child. And yes, that's right, there is a vaccine. It's called BCG. It was introduced in 1921, and it's been given to more than 4 billion people on the planet. Unfortunately, TB does not, uh, BCG does not prevent the real lung tuberculosis in adults. It has prevented several millions of kids from dying from childhood versions of tuberculosis, but it will never stop the transmission cycle and therefore help us to eliminate the disease. And again, this is the point where scientists like myself and others can make a difference. There are about several dozen different research groups on the planet currently working to make a better uh, TB vaccine. I'm one of them. And although this slide may look like a bit of a race, it is really a global effort where we all come together and try to make a difference to come up with an effective vaccine that works. To develop a vaccine is a very expensive and long process. It takes at least 20 years to move a vaccine from the preclinical studies all the way through to a licensed product. You can see here, illustrated by those blue bars, that some of those vaccine candidates, how we call them, have already progressed to different parts of this clinical pipeline. Some are already close to being licensed. But unfortunately, in very recent years, it has become apparent that many of those vaccines are not better than BCG. So there may be an option, an alternative to BCG, but they won't help us eliminate the disease. And that is why we can't be complacent and we have to continue to work on new concepts, new methods, and new strategies to develop uh, a vaccine that actually works. The little red arrow on the bottom, that's me. <laughs> My vaccine is still in the, the preclinical stages, um, but I'm trying to work on new concepts that are currently not used by those other uh, vaccines. And this is where the science comes in. So I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible, but bear with me. So most vaccines target immune cells in your body, depicted here by those purple cells. 
When a vaccine is introduced, shown here in red, it is taken up by those cells and then presented on the surface of these cells. That's how we call this. And this leads to the attraction of other immune cells and they then lead to protection against the disease. This is quite common for most diseases and most vaccines. Unfortunately, for the vaccines being developed for tuberculosis, many of the ones that are currently going through this clinical pipeline target a cell type that is destroyed by HIV. And I've told you earlier that HIV is a major risk factor for reactivation of tuberculosis, so these vaccines will not work, in particular in the context of HIV uh, uh, in, in these countries. So I had a different idea. I am a microbiologist, so I can work on genetically engineered bacteria and uh, immunology. So what I did, we uh, still introduced the vaccine, we still target these particular immune cells, but what we did is we made a vaccine that remains inside the cell. And what that does, it, it leads to the secretion of uh, messenger molecules, how we call them. And these messenger molecules target particular cell types that can also be protective, but they do not uh, get destroyed by HIV infection. And secondly, we are also trying to work on a new approach to deliver the vaccine. Because currently BCG is given as a needle injection. And believe me, not many children will look like this when they've just been given <laughs> a needle. So, but we also know that a needle-based uh, vaccination um, only generates immune cells that are kind of circulating through the body but not really go to the lung where they're needed when uh, tuberculosis infection occurs. So in our approach, we're also trying to develop a vaccine that can be administered directly into the lung with this puffer. And we know that this approach generates a particular type of immune cell that remains in the lung and can act directly when tuberculosis infection occurs. And if this approach will be successful, this global effort comes to a conclusion, then I hope by 2050, when I will be a grandfather, I will be able to tell my grandchildren that TB has been eradicated, not just from cows in East Germany, but from everyone in the whole world. Thank you. <laughs>